Neanderthals were close relatives of modern humans who lived alongside early Homo sapiens in Western Eurasia from Iberia and Britain through the Near East into Siberia. While their equally close cousins, the Denisovans, occupied parts of Central and East Asia. They had dolichocephalic skulls with pronounced brow ridges, large nasal openings, robust skeletons adapted to cold climates, and modern vocal anatomy. Their hyoid shapes suggest they were capable of complex speech. They lived in small hunter-gatherer groups, used sophisticated stone tools, controlled fire, hunted large game, and likely cared for the injured. Neanderthal patrilineal and mitochondrial lineages were not passed down to modern humans, meaning that all surviving human Y and DNA lineages ultimately trace back to Homo sapiens. At the same time, autosomal analyses of Eurasian populations, using such tools as Kpalm, clearly demonstrate trace Neanderthal admixture, showing us that interbreeding did occur even though Neanderthal sex-linked lineages vanished. Here are some ways the Neanderthal sex-linked lineages might have vanished. Male Neanderthals had trouble impregnating female Homo sapiens because of three sex-linked mutations on the Y chromosome that cause an immune response in pregnant human women, which make miscarriages likely, as alleged by two 2016 and 2019 studies. Assuming the first generation of Neanderthal hybrids were the offspring of male Homo sapiens, all it would take for Neanderthal sex lineages to disappear is for them to consequently mate with a group of fully Homo sapien women. There are some myths that need to be disproven. One of these myths is that Neanderthals have blonde, ginger or brown hair and blue or green eyes. The Neanderthal genetic data we have does not support this. In fact, the Neanderthals lack all major depigmentation variants. Some have speculated that Neanderthals might have carried depigmentation variants that they didn't pass to human descendants, but this is purely speculative. There is no actual evidence to confirm this. The Neanderthals did, however, carry some MC1R variants that might be linked to lighter skin, but the effect of these variants is still poorly understood as they aren't found in modern humans. FST analysis show that Neanderthals do not cluster with Europeans or modern Eurasians. Instead, due to deep divergence in different demographic histories, they often appear equidistant from, or in some metrics closer to, sub-Saharan Africans, highlighting that Neanderthals were a distinct archaic population, rather than proto-Europeans. FST is very sensitive to drift, especially when one population has low heterozygosity, as is the case with Neanderthals and Denisovans, which inflates their FST to one another. I circumvented this issue by using F2 statistics for comparison instead. With F2 statistics, the Denisovans end up closest to Neanderthals, who are actually their nearest relatives, and the Neanderthals end up closest to the Denisovans. You might have noticed that with F2 statistics, the chimps and other apes end up close to Denisovans and Neanderthals. This happens because most ancient DNA datasets are built from SNP panels, such as the 1240K panel, and are chosen because they are polymorphic among modern humans, especially West Eurasians. Sites where modern humans differ from the ancestral state are overrepresented, while sites where archaic hominins or apes differ from each other are underrepresented. This causes apes, Neanderthals, and various other non-humans to cluster tightly with one another in F2 because they are sharing many of the ancestral alleles. This is also the reason the Neanderthals cluster so close to Africans. Now let's discuss some of the ancestral alleles that the Neanderthals share with apes and to a lesser extent with Africans. The first trait the Neanderthals share with apes is related to brain chemistry. The Neanderthals uniformly carry the vowel slash vowel genotype in Compt associated with lower dopamine levels as well as other warrior alleles in Compt, MAOA and MAOB. The second trait also about brain chemistry. The Neanderthals, just like the apes, 
uniformly carry the A1 slash A1 genotype in TAC1 associated with a significant reduction of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain, reduced likelihood of conditions such as schizophrenia, and increased odds of ADHD. The next trait we will discuss is also about brain chemistry. The Neanderthals uniformly carry the short form 5-HTTLPR allele, which is a trait they share with apes. This reduces expression of the serotonin transporter, leading to a nervous system that is more reactive to environmental stressors. In modern humans, this variant is associated with heightened emotional sensitivity and a stronger amygdala activation, especially under adverse conditions, suggesting that Neanderthal brain chemistry may have favored rapid threat detection and behavioral reactivity rather than the stress-resilient profile seen more often in carriers of the long allele. Next trait the Neanderthals share with apes is higher empathy. That's right, the Neanderthals were strongly predisposed to higher levels of empathy based on OXTR genotypes. So were the apes. Another trait is related to Alzheimer's risk. Both the Neanderthals and the apes uniformly carry APOE risk variants for Alzheimer's. The variant they carry is linked to a significant increase in the risk of Alzheimer's disease. Now, one surprising factor about the Neanderthals is that they actually had some variants within the HLA gene, meaning they share many alleles in HLA with modern humans rather than apes. This is not necessarily a good thing, as ancestral genotypes in HLA tend to be low risk. Another surprising fact about the Neanderthals is that they carried alleles for blood types A, O, and B, and a wide range of possible blood times that was similar to modern humans. In the description of this video, you will find the links to purchase 6 Neanderthal genomes in 23andMe format, a chimpanzee genome, and also my tools for analysis. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.